<laughs> All right, so this is the teaching demonstration for the natural selection, evolution by natural selection lab. And uh, to introduce the lab, uh, it follows the fossil lab. This lab always follows the fossil lab. So you want to tie it into what we did last week. So you can, in your introduction, you can say, hey, remember what we did last week with the fossils? And we talked about evolution. Um, we made a big assumption that evolution occurs in the first uh, in the first exercise when you looked at the fossils and then we went over three possible theories that uh, are explanations for the diversity of life uh, in lecture Dr. Elser is going to go over all three of those and give you lots of information on that today we're going to focus only on Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection okay and uh, so what do you think of when you hear the term evolution? Ooh, evolution. Okay, so what comes to mind when you hear the term evolution? Okay, and hopefully somebody will say something. Um, and uh, so whatever, you know, the students give feedback on. Um, you know, like, oh, that's great. Uh, scientists view evolution as simply change over time. Okay, change over time. And uh, so scientists are looking at, okay, how species change over time when we talk about evolution uh, in the scientific community. So how species change over time. Okay. But evolution's been going on uh, for a long, the concept of evolution isn't something that's new. I mean, you can talk about the evolution of the cell phone or the evolution of um, uh, computers and how computers have changed over time. They've evolved over time with better technology. And so that's what scientists are viewing is how species change over time. And this concept or this theory of evolution, uh, Darwin did not come up with the concept of evolution. So that's a big misconception that a lot of people think that Darwin, you know, coined this term evolution. But no, evolution, the term evolution, change over time, uh, and species changing over time, that's been debated since Socrates and Plato. So that's been going on for a long time. And in fact, just a little historical party trivia fact, uh, it was uh, Charles Darwin's grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, that um, started uh, really talking about evolution. Okay? So Darwin didn't go seeking evolution. He was, that wasn't his life's goal. It just kind of happened um, uh, when he was you know, in his first job, and, which was going on this big voyage uh, around the world. So that's just a misconception that I uh, wanted to clear up. Okay? Now, what did Darwin do? Uh, Darwin explained, gave a possible explanation for how evolution occurs. Okay, so um, how species change over time. Okay, and he explained how species change over time. Uh, he called evolution by natural selection. Okay, natural selection. That's Darwin's theory. He explained that species change over time, they evolve over time through the mechanism of natural selection. Okay, so when you hear people say through the mechanism, uh, what we're meaning by that is how did something happen? Okay, so if I were to ask uh, what was the mechanism behind the evolution of the cell phone? Okay, so how did the technology of the cell phone evolve? Or if I ask what mechanism got you here to campus today, to lab today? Okay, how'd you get here? Did you walk? Did you ride your bike? Drive? Take the bus? Come on a camel? I don't know. But that's what we mean when we use the word mechanism. Okay? So Darwin proposed the mechanism for species changing over time, evolving over time, is by natural selection. Okay? So that is Darwin's theory. Uh, now, there, yeah, there's a lot of controversy about the theory of evolution by natural selection or just evolution itself, that species do change over time and aren't fixed, um, uh, aren't fixed from uh, whatever creation. And, but in the scientific community, 
uh, there is no debate or controversy about evolution. Okay, so just so that you, you understand a little bit about that. And again, Dr. Elser is going to go into that in great detail in lecture. I think uh, this is coming up week. I think he lectures on Wednesday. All right. So in order to uh, look at Darwin's um, theory of natural selection, okay, evolution by natural selection, uh, he established some rules. Okay, so Darwin's rules. And his rules. All right, so the first rule is that you have to have what's called heritable variation okay, within a species. Okay? Heritable variation within a species. So when you hear the term heritable, what usually comes to mind? Okay, heritable or inheritance. Okay? So hopefully somebody will say, oh, you know, you, you inherit things from your parents. So yeah, we're talking genetics here, okay? So um, uh, things being passed on from parent to offspring, okay? And then, um, oh, variable, variation. Variation, <laughs> that's what I want to write. Oh, I don't know why I said variable. Okay, heritable variation. And so when we talk about variation, we're talking about uh, that not everybody in the population is identical, right? There's variation for uh, characteristics or traits in the population. So like there's variation for eye color. There's variation for height. There's variation for intelligence. And these variations within the population you inherited from your parents. So that's uh, heritable variation, okay? So there has to be heritable variation within a population. And the second big rule that uh, Darwin uh, proposed in order for natural selection to be the mechanism for evolution is that uh, you have to have limits to reproductive success. Okay, so that's just a fancy way to say what? Not everybody has babies, okay? Or some people are going to have more babies than others, right? So what do you think if we were looking at a population of, I don't know, bunnies, okay, jackrabbits out in the desert, what do you think could be some limits on uh, the bunnies being able to have babies in a population, in their population, okay? So what could be some possible uh, limits to that? Well, maybe uh, predation, right? Okay, predation. Yay, thank you, whoever said that. So they got to survive, right, and, and not be eaten by a predator, okay? Uh, what's another one? Well, they have to have the ability to reproduce, right? In the first place, so hopefully they're not born with some affliction causing them to be sterile or they don't get sick, which can cause, uh, you know, to be sterile. So their ability to reproduce, um, having enough energy to reproduce. Are they able to find food, energy to uh, do the act <laughs> itself? <laughs> okay. Uh, so if they have enough energy to actually um, uh, mate, okay. Another one, hey, <laughs> we're assuming that, you know, Everybody's just going to mate with everybody, but um, the, you have to have uh, you have to be what attractive, <laughs> right? You need to be attractive to uh, uh, attractive to attract a mate. <laughs> okay, so you got to be able to attract a mate, right? You got to be able to, to uh, attract somebody to want to mate with you. So these are just some examples of limits to reproductive success. Okay, so we have to have uh, heritable variation within the population and there um, uh, are going to be limits to reproductive success. Okay, so these are two rules that um, must be in place for Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection uh, to um, uh, be in place. 